Welcome to the News Review on Press TV. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has slammed a potential cooperation pact between Tehran and Beijing. In an interview with Fox News, he said that a Chinese trade deal with Iran would destabilize the Middle East. He said that China's entry to Iran and Tehran's access to money will compound the risks in the region. The top diplomat stressed that Chinese firms will also be subject to economic sanctions against Iran in case of a deal between the two countries. Iran and China are hammering out a long-term strategic partnership. It includes cooperation in a variety of areas and comes amid worsening relations between Beijing and Washington over a host of issues. Uh, joining me to discuss uh, this a little bit and shed some more light on it will be Einar Tangen, author and columnist from Beijing, and Tim Anderson, director for the Center for Counter-Hegemonic Studies, joining us out of Sydney. Good to see you, gentlemen. Uh, to Beijing first. Einar, this is Pompeo is talking about Iran-China relations. It's not Iran-U.S. relations. It's Iran and China, two sovereign nations. What does it have to do with Pompeo in the United States? Well, obviously, uh, Pompeo sees both China and Iran as uh, enemies of uh, the U.S. But more importantly, you, you have to kind of shift focus and ex see exactly what Pompeo is doing. I mean, his his uh, president, uh, Donald Trump, looks like he will lose most definitely. Uh, that means that Pompeo has a short period of time. So what is he doing with it? Uh, it seems that he's positioning himself for a run in 2024, but it's not clear. Uh, which part of the Republican Party he will be part of? They're already uh, at war with each other between the China, uh, between the Hawks, uh, you know, with Rubio and uh, uh, his ilk, and then on the other side you have more uh, moderates, the Never Trumpers, uh, the Lincoln Project. So there's a, a battle for the soul. It's not clear where he fits in. I think the Never Trumpers will be happy to see him go. So. Uh, I think this is just his way of trying to uh, make his mark on history. But in terms of uh, these two countries, yes, um, you know, for China, it, it doesn't really make much difference. Uh, there is no rhyme or reason to the number and target of attacks, other than that they're doing uh, that they're doing better than American companies against Chinese companies. Mm -hmm. Now, Tim Anderson, uh, Pompeo is talking about you know is actually threatening Chinese companies, you know. Uh, he says they will be also sanctioned if they have cooperation with Iranian firms. And he's talking of uh, destabilizing this part of the world. Who's destabilized the Middle East region? Iran or the U.S.? Iran helped Iraq, Syria fight terrorists. What's the U.S. doing in this region? It's a bad joke, isn't it? It wasn't so serious, really. Uh, look, I think Pompeo is way out of his depth. Uh, it's just a question that uh, they're reaping the consequences of the, the contradictions of their policy. There was a very important... Um, editorial in the Washington Post about two weeks ago saying that from the liberal side of US politics that the Trump policy of maximum pressure on Iran had failed and the result was they have effectively paved the way for China into the region which the US wanted to control. So they've cut their own throat effectively and Pompeo is now trying to bluster his way through that problem that they've created for themselves. Mm -hmm. Now, Einar, uh, what is it that really is worrying Washington regarding uh, Sino-Iran uh, Sino relations? Well, if, first off, I want to agree with my colleague. Uh, I think he's spot on. Uh, everything that the U.S. wanted to do is actually backfiring. They're actually pushing China, Iran, Russia, uh, all countries that uh, see uh, you know, U.S. as a st stabilizing entity uh, together. So in, in terms of uh, what they want to accomplish, um, they're, they're really, there's a long-term strategy by the Hawks. They believe that in American exceptionalism, that there is only one system, uh, uh, liberal democratic capitalism, that should be enforced throughout the world, kind of a Hunger mm -hmm. Games scenario. Um, and it's just, it, it doesn't sit well with, uh, especially uh, countries that have long, very long uh, separate histories and cultures that don't really fit into that mold. So they're pushing that. For, for Donald Trump, it's very simple. He's uh, simply trying to get reelected. He's transactional. There's no strategy in there. He's being uh, led by, I think, uh, the more radical elements, the, the hawks in his administration, because he believes that this is the one last chance that he has of salvaging uh, his political career 
uh, creating some sort of incident with Iran or China, uh, where he can therefore, you know, claim that he's a wartime president, not fat, fighting COVID-19, which he's failed, but uh, throwing uh, missiles around and uh, sending troops into harm's way. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tim, tell us a, a, a bit about the reason why Washington is uh, doing this. I mean, Iran uh, sent oil to Venezuela. They threatened it. Iran did its job, of course. And then the, it, they withdrew from the Iran nuclear deal. They threatened European countries. Now they are threatening Chinese companies. Look, it's a, it's a path, uh, it's a dead end that Trump's come to. And I think the one redeeming feature that the Trump presidency had was some level of pragmatism. It seems that he did want to get out of the losing wars mm -hmm. that his predecessors, predecessors set up in Afghanistan and Syria. Yet, as my colleague said, the hawks in his administration effectively blocked most of that way. And now he's left with this maximum pressure on Iran, which has backfired spectacularly. And it means really the, the US is on the way to being pushed out of the entire West Asian region. And I think that's going to be what the Trump administration will be remembered for. Okay, thank you very much for your comments. Let me thank our guests. Uh, we had Einar Tangen, author and columnist who joined us from Beijing. And also Tim Anderson, director of the Center for Counter Hegemonic Studies, joined us out of Sydney. And thank you for watching this edition of the News Review.